Have you ever imagined being an ant, living in a desert ruled not by scorpions or lizards, but by butterflies? To the outside world, butterflies may seem delicate, fragile, and harmless, but to us, they are giants of the sky, winged omens of disaster. Welcome back, my colony members, to the world of ants. In the last episode, our colony fought to survive in the most unforgiving land of Arthronia, the desolation, a place where the sands never rest and the sun shows no mercy. At first, the butterflies gathered here, feeding on the few flowers that dared to bloom. Their wings painted the horizon, and the desert felt almost alive. But as the mid protocotonian period dawned, the land changed. The heat grew relentless, the soil cracked, and the flowers withered. The desolation was born from death itself. Many butterflies perished, others fled, abandoning this wasteland. Yet some remained, and those who stayed adapted. They grew stronger, more cunning, shaped by hunger and fire. We see them not as mere insects, but as a storm on the horizon. To us ants, they are famine's herald, disaster's wings. But before we dare hunt such a creature, the queen's signal surges through the tunnels. Her pheromones call us to duty. Our task is not yet complete. We march first for survival, for the colony, for the queen. Only then will we face the butterfly. Our journey begins. The queen commands us to march toward the heart of the desolation. We follow our instincts, searching for the perfect refuge in this burning wasteland. And then, we see it. A towering silhouette rising from the desert floor. A cactus, vast beyond imagination. This will be our home. We shall call it the giant cactus, Spinocerbus eridorum, the spined fortress of the desert. Like a fortress of green stone, its walls shield us from the scorching sun. Beneath the cracked earth, its taproot plunges deep, while a wide network of shallow roots stretches far, drinking every precious drop of rain that dares to fall in this forsaken land. Inside, the cactus holds a secret, an internal reservoir system, its vertical ribs expanding and contracting with each intake of water. Its outer skin glitters with a layer of silicate, locking the moisture deep within its flesh. But beware. To strike this fortress is folly. The spines will tear your body apart. And even if you pierce the skin, an alkaline sap will flood the wound, sealing it shut. Touch it with your mandibles, and it burns your mouth like a bitter boiling soup. Yet life thrives upon it. This cactus has no leaves, but its green outer stem gathers sunlight, feeding its body through photosynthesis. Above, on its rooftop, flowers bloom. Sweet fountains of nectar, our favorite drink. Every six to ten years, after a superstorm, a miracle awakens, a massive bioluminescent bloom. The desert bursts into radiant light, a festival of color and energy. Soon after, Fruits swell, juicy, heavy with water, the sweetest relief in the heart of the wasteland. Yes, this is perfection. A fortress, a garden, a sanctuary. Here, we shall build our nest. But wait, something is wrong. Look closer, the bodies of plants, their roots shredded apart. A shadow lurks, something is tearing through this land. The queen's pheromone call burns within us. A command. To hunt. The intruder must fall. Look closely. This creature is not just any intruder. It is the larva of the butterfly we seek. Bigger than us. Yet clumsy in battle. Its mandibles are not made to fight ants, but to tear through plants. Even the roots of our sacred giant cactus. With terrifying speed, it devours what sustains our fortress. We cannot allow this. Its body is long, segmented, and built for the soil. The front prolegs end in shovel-like claws, while the hind legs each carry hooked grips,
turning it into a master burrower, it tunnels beneath the desert, seeking roots to feed on and shadowed chambers to hide from the burning sun. And yet, it carries another secret. From the plants it consumes, it channels cooling fluids through its glands, leaving the air around its tunnels strangely cold, a pocket of comfort in this furnace of sand. Do not be fooled by its soft skin. The larva is wrapped in poisonous hairs. Touch them with the parts of your body unarmored by exoskeleton, your joints, your antennae, and you will feel fire searing through your flesh. Difficult prey indeed, but even so, it is slow. When it surfaces from its burrow, our numbers can overwhelm it. Alone, you would fall. Together, we can triumph. And should we succeed, this larva will become more than just a threat. It will be food for our colony, rich, living biomass. But the greater challenge lies ahead. Their pupae are hidden deep underground, the entrances sealed and disguised. Only after the desert storm passes do they emerge, unfurling into the very butterflies we hunt. Then they will scatter laying eggs and spawning countless larvae once more. The queen's pheromones sting our senses. Her command is clear, find them, stop them, or the desert itself will be eaten hollow. You will struggle to find this butterfly. It reveals itself only when the desert flowers bloom, feeding on nectar under the pale night sky of the desolation. This is it, the desert butterfly, Tenebro Papilio Zero Hades. Its name means the dark butterfly of the desert underworld, and true to its name, it is a creature of the night, emerging only after the burning sun has vanished. Its wings are wide, yet fragile looking, crafted of ultralight, heat resistant membranes layered with microscopic scales that silence its flight. To our senses, it moves like a shadow. Its jagged trailing edges let it glide steady through the violent desert winds. Its eyes are compound, tuned for the darkness. With nocturnal vision and heat detection, it can trace warm blooms across the wasteland and migrate between hidden micro-oases. And then, its weapon, a long retractable proboscis, drinking deep from the blossoms of the desert, even our own cactus the fortress we claim as home. They are the pollinators of this barren world. Without them, flowers vanish. But with them comes danger. Strike when they land. In those moments, distracted by nectar, they are vulnerable. Yet do not underestimate them. Beneath the fragile beauty, their thorax and abdomen are shielded by armor plates, absorbing our first bites. By the time the rest of our swarm arrives, they may already take flight, vanishing into the darkness. And worse still, they are breeding. This season, they will lay their eggs, hidden deep beneath the sand, nestled among the roots of desert plants, concealed, camouflaged, waiting to unleash new waves of root-devouring larvae. But if you find them, if you uncover hundreds of their buried eggs, then victory is ours. We can consume them, sustaining our colony and fueling the birth of new warriors. And by destroying their brood, we prevent the rise of caterpillars that would starve the desert bare. The queen's message is clear. The hunt begins tonight. Soon, our eyes catch them, the desert butterflies drifting in the gloom. But capturing them is not easy. The walls here are steep and treacherous, their rough surface resisting our grip. Still, at the base of the wall, one butterfly rests, vulnerable, distracted. We prepare to strike. Then, suddenly, a shadow erupts from the dust. A strange creature, unknown to us, lashes out and seizes the butterfly in its grasp. In a blink, it is gone, dragging our prey into the darkness. This was no ordinary predator. Something else lives here, something dangerous. We must return at once, the queen must be told. 